G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I'm covering a little detail in Revit that's actually been requested of me a lot of times, um, sometimes by clients and sometimes by followers, and it uses a couple of features in Revit you might not be aware of. In this case, we're going to be essentially using slab edges and unlocking the constraints of walls in order to achieve a step down or a shelf edge on the edge of a slab to support a brick detail. Anyway, I'll be using Revit 2020, but these tools have been around for a long time, so it doesn't really matter what version of Revit you're in. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so I've just began from an architectural template. Um, in this case, nothing special, just a default architectural template. So it does have a few basic materials and walls already in the model that you can begin with, um, but I'll explain everything as we go. So the first thing I'm gonna model is a concrete slab. And in this case, I'm gonna use an 86 millimeter concrete slab. Um, I'm just gonna match the drop course of my brick. So I'll just call this concrete 86 millimeters and I'll make sure that the material and the thickness is 86, but the material is concrete cast in situ. And I'm just gonna draw a just a, a nominal slab over here. And we're gonna model a brick wall that goes around this corner, but sits down on a drop shelf. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to model a slab edge, but we're going to build a custom profile. So I'm going to go to new family. And in this case, I'm going to scroll down to metric profile. I'm just going to use the standard profile.rft. I'm going to set the usage of the profile to slab edge so that we don't necessarily have this profile in every other particular instance of the model. I'm just gonna make it go down by two courses, so 172. And if I go in this direction, this is gonna be the outside of the slab that I place it on. So this is gonna be our shelf per se that the brick will sit down on. We're gonna model a cavity and a brick leaf. So the brick leaf will be 110. And in this case, our cavity um, will just make this say probably, we'll make it 30 millimeters for now. There's lots of different potential cavities you could use. Um, but whatever you use, it's gonna be the cavity in your wall type as well. I'm just gonna go down by two courses for the foot. And in this case, I'll just move in by 300. And we're gonna close that off. Now you can always um, add additional parameters to the profile. For example, maybe this always needs to be 172, but maybe this is gonna be the shelf height. So you can have different conditions for different heights of brick that you need to support, because obviously you're gonna want that brick to go below the ground line ideally, and most projects have a changing ground line, so you might sometimes need to step the drop course. Otherwise, for now, we could also potentially add a parameter for the toe depth as well, or the shelf depth. And I'm just gonna rename this in this case, um, just to be a uh, two course, 140 shelf. So I'm gonna give it a type that relates to the parameters that are sizing it. I'm now just gonna save this family. And I'm just gonna call this slab edge.rfa. Now this is just a profile, it's not actually a 3D element. So what I'm gonna to need to do in my model, and I might go to 3D, I'm just gonna to go to the floor tool, I'm gonna to drop it down and I'm gonna pick slab edge. I'm just gonna edit type and I'm gonna switch the profile that's by default six by three to this two course 140 shelf. And I'm also gonna add a material, in this case, concrete cast in situ. Now if I click on the edge of a slab, notice that this profile is now sitting relative to the edge of the slab, but the shelf sits outwards. I can go CS for create similar, and off we go. Now let's say you needed to step this slab edge at a certain point. What you could do, place one, place another one, and drag it back to this point. So unfortunately you can't split slab edges. Uh, what I would need to do is I need to do two things. So I need to actually add another profile type first. Let's say that we wanna have th three courses here. So in this case, I'm gonna go find my slab edge. I'm gonna duplicate the type and call it three course. I'm gonna edit it. In this case, I'm just gonna add another 86 millimeters. Now, if you're not very good at maths, that's okay. What you can do is just build a formula. So I'm gonna go equals 86 times three, enter. And Revit does the maths for me. Now I still need to go back to this slab edge and I might just rename this to two course and I'm gonna make a new slab edge and I'm gonna call this one three course. And I'm gonna pick this additional profile I've created. So you will need to create both the profile and the slab edge in order to create a new type. But in this case, we can see now we have a step and you can always also use your join tool if you wanna clean up the edges between elements like that. 
Now the last thing we need to do is actually model our brick and stud wall. And I'm going to show you how you can make the brick sit down on the shelf in this case, which is a really common detail in residential construction. So first of all, let's actually build our compound wall. So I'm going to go to wall, WA for wall or architecture wall up here. I'm just going to pick the closest wall type, which in this case is going to be a brick veneer 250 timber. And I'm going to edit type. I'm just going to rename this to uh, single brick veneer and for the properties in the structure remember that our brick was 110 which is fine and I believe our cavity was 30 and then we have a 90 millimeter timber stud now often in residential you might include the plaster finish in the stud layer so for now I'm just going to leave this as timber sometimes if people want to see the plaster but they still want to set out the stud the same way they may potentially add an additional 10 millimeter layer and set this to gypsum or whatever material you're lining your stud with. I believe they're a gypsum wallboard. So overall, when you set out this element, you're still seeing the 90 millimeter set out zone, uh, but visually when you render the model, you'll see the internal. Alternatively, you can just make the 90 mil stud zone out of gypsum wallboard. It's not as accurate, but usually for residential construction, it gets the job done. Okay, so at this point, if we go and model these walls justified at the finished face exterior, we can go and model some stud walls. Now I'm going to need to change my detail level just so I can see the layers. But at the moment, note that our layers are lining up to the slab edge. However, if I go to 3D, we have a problem. So I'm just going to make these walls go up to the next level. But at the moment, notice that our brick isn't sitting down on our slab edge. Now I can do a base offset of two courses, so negative 172. The problem is now our stud is inside our floor. And one of the issues this will cause is it will mean that our takeoff is inaccurate. It also makes it really difficult when we get to sort of junctions like this, where we have different conditions for the base of our wall, um, and maybe we potentially want to keep the stud at a, at a constant relative height. So in this case, we really do need a better system. And even I wasn't really aware of this system until I was made aware of it uh, by one of my clients a while ago. It's a really great system, but we're going to actually add some base extensions to the wall. So I'm going to set the base offset to zero. Obviously our bricks are sitting back up at the slab, but if I go to edit type and I go to the structure and I click on my preview button and I just zoom into the top of my wall and I go to modify, I can actually click the top of the wall and unlock it. Likewise, I'm gonna unlock my air cavity. I can also go to the base and do the same thing. I'm gonna okay that and now, if I reselect my wall, check it out. We actually have a control that just controls the layers that we unlocked. Pretty cool, right? And now we can keep our slab up at the right level. And also, as well as this, this has introduced an additional parameter, the base extension distance, which now controls the free elements in the wall type outside of the core zone. Likewise, we also have a top extension distance as well. Now I haven't actually tried seeing what happens if you unlock elements outside one side of the wall, whether they're both controlled by the same thing. I might just quickly test that. So I'm gonna add just a dummy layer in this case. And if I modify this side of the wall, I wonder what happens. Let's okay that, okay. So in this case, you can only actually, in this case, keep layer extensions adjacent on one side of the wall. So in this case, it looks like it won't actually support two sides of the wall, but for a single veneer brick wall, which is the most common application for this wall type, it's a brilliant case study. It's really useful. And if you do have, say, another floor at the next level, say a timber joist floor, you're probably gonna to wanna to stop your studs at the floor, but you may wanna sail your brick up past this point. So I'm gonna delete these slab edges. And in this case, we would probably want our studs to terminate so in this case, because we're going up to level one, I'm going to say that my top extension is, or top offset is negative 86, but I've still got the ability to raise this as a parapet independently. So rather than having to model multiple walls to achieve this type of detail, I can now actually take advantage of this system in order to achieve this really common detail. Um, and a lot of people don't know about the ability of unlocking those layers of the wall. So I hope you find that useful. There's actually a lot of potential for this tool. Um, it's important to note too, if you do a stacked wall that contains a wall with unlocked layers, and I just go into its type properties, in the structure properties, 
let's um, in this case insert that single brick veneer wall. Well, you'll see that you can also modify the top and the base offsets in here as well. So let's just in this case lower these two walls. So notice I actually have the ability to modify those zones independently um, if I want to. So it's, it's, a, it's also a powerful system for sometimes building complex stacked walls that require sub layer control as well. Um, I'd like to thank um, Tom, one of, my, one of my followers, for sharing that with me. Um, I think Tom Kunstman. Um, he, sh he shared this idea with me uh, just by asking what the point of the top and the base layer was. And I'd never thought about it, but it turns out that's actually what it relates to. So um, really great to, to see that that tool actually exposed. Um, but I hope that that helps show you a new construction technique you can use in your Revit projects, especially if you're doing um, mass residential housing. So I hope that um, some of you probably weren't aware of this feature um, in wall types and you might find some other uses for it as well. It's definitely not one of the most obvious features inside walls, especially because those parameters, they don't appear until you actually unlock the layers. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't know about it until quite late, even in my own Revit journey. So um, I'd like to thank the, the people that pointed this out to me um, quite recently. And I hope that you find this useful as well. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing to the channel, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future Revit tutorials as well. Thanks, take care, bye.